STEM fans, are you ready? Let's hear it for the world-class NASA STEM Stars team. From NASA centers across the country, we present Hortense Giggs. Welcome to NASA STEM Stars. Hortense, thank you so much for joining us and happy Women's History Month. How does it feel to be a NASA STEM star? Wow, Lynn, it is so exciting because, you know, I just love the opportunity to have a chance to talk to young minds and to share some of my life experiences with them. So it's just great to be a NASA STEM star and have the opportunity to engage with young people. Yay, okay, well, we're really excited to have you. Um, let me introduce myself. My name is Lynn Dotson. I'll be hosting today's live event from Kennedy Space Center. And we want to welcome our audience to the 47th edition of NASA STEM Stars webinar, where students like you guys um, connect firsthand with scientists, engineers, and innovators from around NASA centers. So they'll share their missions, they share their paths and their opportunities. So joining us today is Hortense Diggs the Director of the Office of Communications and Public Engagement at Kennedy Space Center. Hortense will share a little bit about her background, her career, her experiences, and her amazing work she does for NASA. Finally, be sure to stick around, you guys, because your questions will be answered uh, in the chat. If you guys have put your questions in the chat, we will try to get them to Hortense and have her answer some of your questions. Um, and I also want you to stick around because we do have a call of action at the end, but let's just get started because I'm very happy to have her here. Um, it is my pleasure once again to introduce Hortense Diggs. Thank you for joining us and tell us a little bit about yourself and your interests. Wow. Okay. So Lynn, I grew up in the great state of Texas and really didn't have a, a knowledge of NASA or wanted to do anything with NASA. My greatest interest right now is I love to work in my yard. Now, I never thought that would be something I would wanna do when I was growing up because I hated yard work and I had allergies. But for some reason, since relocating here to Florida, I don't have a problem with my allergies. So one of my greatest things is to have some meditation and get some vitamin D in just by simply working in my yard. Uh, the other thing that I really like is traveling. I mean, just going places and, and sharing uh, new adventures. And I'm one of those people that when I travel, I like to take my NASA stuff with me. So I'm always giving that out to, to young couples that have kids. I'm always trying to engage folks to let them know, hey, if you're ever in Florida, you gotta check us out at the NASA Kennedy Space Center. So no matter where I am, whether I'm in Venice or Orlando, I just love traveling and engaging people with NASA and the great things that we do. Oh, that's amazing. Your passion for NASA is obviously very uh, apparent to me, especially if you're bringing things around the world to try to share the, the word of NASA. So thank you for doing that and inspiring so many Hortons. Um, one of the questions I have uh, here is, how did you get where you are today? So kind of talk a little bit about your school, your background, where you started and how you ended up here at NASA. Well, it's only by the grace of God that I ended up here at NASA. As a young person, uh, I wanted to be a dancer. You know, I was in the drill team in high school and that's what I, I thought I wanted to do. I also had this little moment where I thought, well, maybe I'll be a teacher. But then as I got to be uh, in high school, I really focused on being a doctor. I wanted to be a pediatrician. That was my ultimate job. I would still get to work with students, but I'd be a doctor, so I thought that's what I wanted to do. Then I got a, a scholarship to Prairie View A&M University, 
And engineering, and to be honest, Lynn, I had no idea what engineering was. I thought it was the man on the back of the train. And I thought, oh, I'm way too cool for that. I don't want to do that. Couldn't understand what math had to do with the man on the back of the train. But my mother said, I don't care what engineers do. You've got a scholarship to Prairie View and University in engineering. So that's where you're going. So I went to Prairie View and I, I learned a lot more of what engineering was and it was not the man on the back of the train. <laughs> and uh, from there, I decided to major in mechanical engineering because like I said, my knowledge of engineering was really, was really limited. But I felt that mechanical was the most versatile. So since I didn't know any whole lot about either discipline, I chose mechanical. When I graduated, I was offered a job to the Naval Ordnance Station in Indian Head, Maryland, and boy, did I love that job. My first job was designing underseat rocket motors, and I went from there to the Air Force, where I was the where I was the lead engineer for all rockets, all Delta rockets launched from Kennedy Space Center. And then I matriculated there to NASA, where I'm now the uh, Director of Communications and Public Engagement. Wow, what a path. So you can actually see here in our slides. Um, so once you are on that path and you finally got here, what were some of the things that you did um, there? You can see I see some some rovers there in the picture. So kind of explain right. that. Right. Well, first of all, it took me nine years to get to NASA. I applied for nine years straight. And then once I got there, I was in the office of launch services programs. And I know a lot of people hear about shuttles, but launch services program launches what we call expendable launches. And in my personal opinion, they do the real science missions. Those are the missions that go to Mars, that go to Pluto and all of those other planets. So I was a mission assurance manager and uh, I was a mission assurance manager for MER A and MER B, which a lot of people have had had a lot of knowledge on it was a uh, uh, spirit and opportunity with what they were named by an elementary student and so it's just awesome just a great time working in launch services program and i did that for nasa for about eight years i worked in launch services programs as a mission assurance manager Wow. So you had mentioned something about nine years. It took you nine years to yes. get to NASA. So that was, can you kind of explain how that, how come it took so long and what were the, some of the struggles and how did you persevere through that? Well, I, um, as I stated, I was from Texas, now living in Florida, and I thought I wanted to go back to Texas. So I thought I would get there by working for NASA and get to Johnson Space Center. So I started applying and it was like every time I applied, I got these rejection letters. And I just still kept applying until I had a friend that got on at NASA and he was like, hey, this job I'm doing is your job. You know, you know way more about Delta rockets than I do. And I'm calling you every day to learn something about the rocket just so I can do my job. So the next time there's an opening, you should apply. And, you know, even though it had been years of rejection, rejection, I just believe what's for me is what is for me. And I don't get to control the timing sometimes. So I applied and, hey, I ended up at NASA as happy as could be. That is, what an amazing story. Again, perseverance. That's such a great, great thing. And now you're you're leading like a huge group, the the PX group. And you I remember you always, you always say PX proud and it just um, you're such a great leader. She you are my boss. And it's just um, what an inspiration to be working with you. So what does the office or the director of the Office of Communication and Public Engagement actually do at Kennedy Space Center? everything that makes me px proud <laughs> so basically uh communications and public engagement at kennedy we are responsible for amplifying the nasa and kennedy space center story and making sure the world knows the great things that we do and we do that in several different ways uh, we do that through our office of education 
uh, our OSTEM office, where we're reaching out to young people and educators and making sure they are aware of the great things that we do at NASA and in regards to students to make sure that they know there are opportunities there for them. And then we have our visitors complex, which is where our guests come to visit Kennedy Space Center to get engaged with what we do. And then there's the media side where we're talking to someone on radio media, television media, or print media, where we're making sure everything that NASA is doing, we're getting ready for crew two, and we're pushing that information out to social media, every media form that exists my team is responsible for making sure we get that message out. And then last, but definitely not least, we have our guest operations. And that's where we have people come yeah. to NASA for tours or for whatever to visit us. So my team is the first folk they get to meet with, the people that literally take them on those exciting tours. So we do all things fun at NASA and all of it makes me PX proud. That is amazing. I'm, I'm looking at the pictures right now, and it, I see uh, one of the best movies I've seen in a long time, Hidden Figures. So you got to actually work with the hidden figures, um, the, the people that in the movie. That's amazing. Can you talk a little bit about that experience? Yes, I absolutely can. As I said, one of our job, one of the things we're responsible for is guest operations. So right before the movie uh, was released, of course, they go out, the, uh, what they call the talent team, which is the actual stars, they go out on these promotional things. And of course, they came to NASA. And when they came to NASA, we had the auditorium filled with, uh, first, with uh, fourth through ninth graders. And it was just an awesome experience for those students as well as us to have that panel of talent. We had uh, uh, Pharrell Williams, we had Octavia Spencer, we had more, uh, Janelle Monet, and of course we had Cookie from Empire, <laughs> whose uh, <laughs> real name, uh, who also played Katherine Johnson in the movie. So it was just a great e event and a great opportunity, again, for us to engage our community in this event as well very neat yeah so i guess if someone if some of the kids are watching and they maybe want to go into some kind of um job like this a management job what, what would be some advice maybe possibly could give them um to, to lead a group because you are such an excellent leader can you give them some uh advice on even just getting to nasa and maybe possibly leading a group yeah well i'll start with leading a group first when you're leading people, you, you have to remember that it's all about the people. You know, if you want to motivate people, you have to be there for what they need so that they can do their job. But as a leader, I see my job is to make sure the team has what they need so then they can do the job that's been identified for them. So it's all about the people, taking the time to have an interest in your people and making sure they're okay and making sure they have all the skills that they need to do their job. And when they don't, filling in the gap and letting them know you're there to support. And, you know, in my opinion, that's just a, a great leader that sees themselves as a part of the team and not always leading the team. I recognize that I am a part of this team as well, not only the leader, but a part of the team. As far as getting to NASA, I would say know what you want and don't let anything stop you. Stay focused on what you want. If the doors may not open the first time, they may not even open the fourth time. So many times you hear astronauts say they applied for the core up to four or five times, but they stayed focused and they knew what they wanted and they just kept going for it. And eventually that door opened at the right time and, and allowed them to be the great astronauts that they are. And whatever your dream is, just stay focused on it. Don't give up. Don't let anyone talk you out of it. That is some very well-spoken advice, and I know that you follow that. And you, the leadership part of uh, of working for you is just um, you are inspirational and you do lead a team, but you have all those qualities. Um, what is work life like at NASA, just like a, a day in the life of you at NASA? Wow, Lynn, I don't want to scare the audience. <laughs> it can be... <laughs> 
very challenging our work life. You know, there's a certain time rockets have to launch. Doesn't matter about the other work that's on your plate. We launch at a certain time. And so, you know, the work-life balance, everything getting ready for that, you have to make sure you're doing it no matter what it is. And so you may not feel like you have a lot of work-life balance when we're in the middle of a launch campaign. But when we're not, you have to take advantage of not being in a, in a demanding situation at the point. And that's when you get to really have some work-life balance, making sure you're spending quality time with your family, making sure you're taking care of yourself and doing some of those other, other things that are important to you and making you enjoy your life. So, but NASA, even in all that, when it, when it seems like we have no work-life balance, at least the PX team, the communication team, we love what we do so much to literally, most people don't even realize, I have to remind folks, hey, you might need to take some time off because the team <laughs> absolutely loves the work that we do. I agree. Yes, it's every every day is different at NASA, and I it's it's so cool. But yes, work life balance is very uh, great advice from you. Um, I have a chat a uh, question in the chat. Um, this is from Laura, and they wanted to know: Did you ever want to go to space on a mission? So huh. yeah, that is a, you know what I will say is had. I know about that opportunity earlier in my life. I think it would have been something that I might would have considered. But by the time I realized, hey, that's something I could have done, it was, uh, at least in my mind, not a good time. It was kind of too late for me to make that adjustment. And so I think I would have uh, liked to go. And I, I will say this, I would like to go now. You know, if I had the money, for myself to go on one of these uh, commercial flights where you can commercially fly, it might be something I would do. I think I would love to be up in space looking down at the beautiful blue mall. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's the astronauts that go up there talk about how awesome it is. The stories are inspirational. But yes, I agree with you, Hortense. I will also get on that uh, flight with you uh, if, the, if the opportunity arises. But yeah, it has to be the right timing for everyone. Um, uh, Lena, uh, one of the questions we had just uh, kind of, you kind of touched on this already, but the best piece of advice, this really is what can you give the students that are listening are around 13 and up and that are listening today and hopefully a whole bunch of other people will be watching this, but what would be the best piece of advice you could give students that are tuning in right now? Well, you know, I, I love speaking to students. I wanted to be a teacher, as I said, uh, early, early, early in my teen years. And the best advice I would give a student is if you are not an A student, it's not too late. It's all about practice. Just practice, practice, practice the skill that you are liking in. It's like being a football player or a basketball player. You see them out there practicing their free throws. They're in the NFL making, I mean, they're in the uh, NBA making millions of dollars, still practicing their free throws. So whatever it is you want to do, if you are not at the top of your game, just remember to practice. And then to my A students, Remember to help, you know, this world we live in is all about helping each other. So if you are an A student and you see a student that's struggling, spend some time with them, helping them to get to be where you are as an A student. I, I think that is great advice. I think that we can help each other as a world and be a better place if we sacrifice ourselves to help each other and recognize when we are when our talents are short somewhere and that is needed and decide to work on them ourselves to improve them. Wow. Okay. Um, wow. Your, your advice is well, to, well taken. I see why you are such an excellent leader because you have such good advice. And um, I think we all inspire to be uh, better people. And I think that's amazing that you're saying lift others up because too many times people try to bring people down. So lift each other's up. Even if you are doing really well, always lift each other up. So um, another question, what is your favorite? through the years that you've been with NASA, how, what's your favorite project you've worked on? 
Oh man, that's a hard one. I've had so many things that I've just been excited about. But one of the things that comes to mind is um, we had an opportunity at KSC to host students from minority, to host the age level of students that we're talking to today who were involved in programs at minority serving universities for the summer. We had an opportunity to bring about 600 of those students from five different universities to the Kennedy Space Center for our what we call Legends and Trailblazers event. The whole promise was that we would hope we'd have a launch at that time for the students to, to see. But the launch got delayed and the students didn't get to see a launch, but the the event was so awesome. Uh, we had, a lot of you heard of Katherine Johnson. We had her and it was just spectacular that when she was introduced to these students as the human computer, these students stood up with a standing ovation for her and it just melted my heart to know that these students knew what great shoulders we all stand on because of what Katherine Johnson. You know, prior to her being introduced, we had introduced Leland Melvin, who's an astronaut. Our, our um, administrator of NASA had been introduced. And these are great people in their own right, but they didn't stand up for them. They stood up with a loud or standing ovation for Katherine Johnson. And that was just such, just to even be able to pull off that event with 600 kids from five different minority serving universities, just exposing them to an opportunity that they had never had. Uh, and I, we came up with this idea because a dean at one of the schools said their biggest challenge was trying to motivate minority students who had never been 10 blocks out of their neighborhood. So to be able to bring them to a Kennedy Space Center, what would that do? And right to this day, I still get letters from students who were a part of that program, as well as some of their parents who were so inspired, they themselves went back to school. So that was just an awesome event, Lynn. Wow, that does sound what, like one of the coolest um, opportunities and, and uh, what uh, amazing to be a part of. I wanted to just say there's a few comments that have been coming in. Uh, one person said, Hortense, you are a teacher super inspiring. So even though you said that you're not a teacher, you are uh, because you're inspiring so many others. And then um, they love the fact that you said helping others by leading. Um, and so the, these people that are listening are obviously very inspired by you. Um, we are going to talk a little bit about, um, we're, we're going to kind of start wrapping things up, but I, I know that um, there, you're going to probably have some final thoughts for everyone. And then after your final thoughts, of course, I want to make sure I tell kids that they have a call of action and we'll talk a little, I'll talk a little bit about that. But um, there, the last thing I have is kind of just leave the students with, um, oh, here's one, another one. Have you ever participated in a, mi a space mission? Sorry, there's another one that came in just a second ago. Have you ever participated uh, in an actual space mission. So meaning, so I'm, I'm not sure what their main meant. Yeah, so I, I'm going to assume you mean participate in being a part of a mission that went to space. So yes, yes. in my time as a launch services program as a mission assurance manager, uh, what I did to participate in those missions, a mission assurance manager, uh, the way I can break it down, and you can, it's like a quality engineer. So my role was to make sure all of the hardware that we received in from the contract met all of the requirements that we expected it to have. Now, where the engineering comes in is if it doesn't. How do you get it qualified? How do you say, okay, we can use this. What do we have to do to be able to use it? Or do we just have to scrap it and they have to give us better hardware? So I've been involved with about, I'm going to guess over my time in launch services program, I'm going to guess with about 15 missions where I had that role. 
Wow. So you've done a little bit of everything, it sounds like. And the, your, your current leadership role, it's great that you have this role because you know a little bit of everything. Um, and that's what a good educator is. So uh, yes, you are an inspiring educator in my eyes. So if you were to leave the students with this um, piece of advice, I know you've already given some advice, but some last words. Um, this is Women's History Month, and you are um, obviously representing a lot of women. Um, and if you have any advice or final thoughts for students, um, we would love to hear from you. In addition to the uh, other advice I've already given, you know, I, you know, I'm a mom, so I have three kids and I notice that sometimes they don't take advice very well. But I want you to remember that sometimes your educators, your teacher, definitely your parents, they can see things in you that you can't see. So don't blow off the direction and the guidance that they may give, be giving you for the future. You know, I never would have gone into engineering had it not, not been for the folk who saw things in me and gave me those scholarships to prayer view because of my math grades. So just, you know, be aware that people will see things in you that at first you're going, hmm? I don't know about that. <laughs> But take their advice. They just might be giving you some great advice. And my career at NASA, a lot of the positions that I've held were not because I sought after them. They were because someone said, hey, I think you'll be good at that. And then I took it on and I did my best in it. And it turned out to be, in a lot of cases, the best thing for me in my career. So be willing to uh, listen to folk and see what they think might be good for you. I love it. Thank you so much, Hortense. Um, we're gonna do a quick call to action because I want these students to, to share with us some really neat stuff. So the, we're going to show you your next, your mission is um, you're actually going to, and this has to tie with what Hortense um, had, one of her missions when she was working with Opportunity and Spirit. Well, you all know that the Mars helicopter, well, Mars 2020 launched from Kennedy Space Center last year and we have landed on, February 18th, we landed and we are planning on trying out the Mars helicopter. So what we want you to do to get you ready for that exciting event is we want you to actually try to make your own little helicopter. So in the chat, you are going to be seeing a link to the instructions for making a helicopter and keeping it fly and keeping it in the air. So that's the whole goal there. So definitely check that out. If you guys decide that you are going to do this, please share on social media what you've created, um, how you made it fly better, um, be an engineer with it and be creative. And we would love to see you um, hashtag next gen STEM so we can share also on our social media um, about your cool um, engineering designs. We also want you to subscribe uh, to this channel if you haven't yet, because it is um, NASA STEM stars is a Every year, every every episode is uh, somebody new. And this has been a very inspirational one. And I do wanna say thank you so much to Hortense for um, joining us today on this Women's History Month. Um, we will continue. I wanna talk to you the next uh, NASA STEM stars you will see is in Espanol. And it will be Ali Guerrero uh, Luna. And her topic is aerospace engineering. And we refer to her as La Doctora of the Cube Stats. And that will be next uh, Wednesday, March 24th, 2001 at 2 p.m. Eastern. So uh, once again, thank you, Hortense. Thank you, NASA STEM stars out there. Uh, thank you to everyone that's been watching and just keep keep pushing forward, persevere, um, because you too can be a NASA STEM star someday. Thanks, guys. Shh.